As we have seen, Jesus created quite a controversy. His teaching freed people from demons, brought unlikely folks together at the table, and healed them. The last story in a panel of Sabbath controversies early in the Gospel of Mark shows something particularly chilling in this response from the religious elite. Let's take a look. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save a life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger, and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Stubborn hearts? Uh Uh-oh. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Well, that's the biblical way of expressing that people are getting out of sync with God. These Pharisees are standing in the shadow of some problematic responses to God's work. Pharaoh, our classic bad guy from the Exodus narrative, hardened his own heart over and over against the leaders of God. How about the Israelites who hardened their hearts? The biblical story and summary of the northern kingdom, Israel's line of kings, reads like this. But they would not listen. But they were stubborn as their fathers had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. You see, hardening your heart against God only leads to death. Cast as a new Moses type in this new Exodus narrative, Jesus puts before the people the same kind of choices that Moses does in Deuteronomy. Just like Moses warned, be no longer stubborn. He put it plainly to the God followers of his day. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. In our passage, Jesus does the same. Easy enough, right? Who would choose as these Pharisees did against life? Well, keeping our hearts soft instead of hard is actually challenging. It will cost us something. It will ask us to give up, well, ourselves. Let's look at Ben Wetherington's take on our passage in Mark. What we discover is that wherever Jesus goes, he provokes a crisis of faith. It is impossible to cling to the status quo and accept Jesus at the same time. Jesus even forces the issue of decision-making with his own disciples. There is a sense in which he asks each group in Israelite society to give up what was most dear to them in order to embrace him. To the disciples, the challenge meant giving up family and job. To the Pharisees, it meant giving up their position of chief religious figures of their age. To the scribes, it meant giving up being the providers of the correct interpretation of the oral and written Torah. For ordinary Jews, it meant giving up certain attitudes about the moral outcasts and the diseased in society. The wonder is not that Jesus was eventually rejected by all these groups, but that he was not rejected and killed sooner. So maybe we can view it like this. We can either harden our hearts against Jesus' invitation to change and obey God, or we can join him and find true life no matter how much it costs us. There's something about the human heart that calcifies against God, like these Pharisees who begin a murder plot against Jesus in the face of a miraculous healing. Can we, like the healed man, simply stretch out our hand Obey Jesus and find life. Or will we, like these Pharisees, see Jesus as a threat to our existence? Or will we see him as the path to life, no matter the cost?